Hi guys, welcome back to Wednesday week number four on a bit of a roll, armed with my trusty cup of tea. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get stuck into the debate. Now, as ever, it's unscripted, it's ad lib. Uh, in saying that, in the corner of the screen, I know you can't see it, but I've got a couple of notes that um, I'd like to touch upon. But uh, I'll probably forget all about them and leave them out. But if I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. Um, now, what I want to talk about is the PlayStation 3 versus the 360. And like I say, it's got to go back and forth. There's not really going to be any real structure to this debate. I'm going to repeat myself a lot. Um, but hopefully I'll get the, the gist of the message over. And I'm just really curious as to what you guys have. Do you have a PlayStation 3? Do you have a 360? Do you have them both? Do you not have any of them? Do you not even care? But I guess predominantly and primarily it's aimed at people who do have one or the other, or one over the other. And why is that the case? Now, I've got a 360 and I've got a PS3. Um, obviously the PS3 came out, what was it, 2006, November 2006 I think, and a year before that the Xbox came out. So it was a huge head start, you know, it was a huge market that straight away in terms of new technology that the Xbox had. It was, a, it was just, I think, a mistake by Sony, even though you could say that figures these days are saying that the PS3 is growing in sales. Some may say it has overtaken the 360, but I guess it, it depends on who you believe. I don't think it really matters, you know, they're two consoles which are hugely popular and have great games, great graphics, and maybe that's the crux of the matter. Maybe I've summed up the argument just there and then, just, you know, a minute in, just by saying they're both great. But it, it's obviously very individualistic. What do you prefer and why do you prefer it? Now, the thing is, I was a massive PlayStation 1 fan. Massive fan, particularly in the early years, uh, or the early years, I should say, from 95 up until around about 98. I absolutely adored it. I would spend a fortune on games, and it was my, my console of choice. It was just a great bit of kit. Um, games released after 98 for the PS1 nostalgically don't really mean anything to me because I didn't really spend a great deal of time with it after 98. But from 95 up until 98, I'd say, was um, was a great, great time. Then I moved on to the PlayStation 2, like obviously the majority of people did, and it was an amazing console. I absolutely loved it. Now, towards the end, when was it? Right about 2003, 2004. So it's near the end of the lifespan for the original Xbox before the 360 came out. I purchased an original Xbox. And I absolutely loved it. I always felt sorry for the original Xbox in a way because even though it was a great bit of kit and still is, um, and always will be, you know, uh, an amazing games console, I just felt sorry for it because it, it kind of lost the war. You know, the war between the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. The, the PS2 came out on top and um, I don't think many people can doubt that. Even a staunch fan. Now, of course, technically speaking, more often than not, the graphics were, were superior on a three six. Oh, sorry, on an original Xbox. And I found this out myself on many games, uh, most notably um, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. When I got that and compared it on a PS2 and, a, and an Xbox, there was no comparison. The Xbox looked more polished. It was less glitchy. It just it was a more it was just a better experience. And um, as a result of playing that game, I think it came out a lot later um, than the, the PS2 version. But as a result of seeing the difference, I think it was from that moment onwards that I kind of said, yeah, I'm going to stick to the Xbox. I'm going to kind of leave the PS2 behind and concentrate on the original Xbox. So by the time the 360 came out, like I say, in, when was it, November 2005? November 2005. By the time that came out, I didn't hesitate in getting it because I didn't really have a particular affinity towards Sony. Yes, I had had a PS1 and a PS2, but I'm just a gamer at heart, and I don't really care what comes out. I just want to play the best games. It doesn't matter what the console is, it doesn't matter what the brand is. I want to play good games, uh, you know, what's best for me. So I didn't have a problem at all, like, you know, kind of defecting, even though I didn't really defect, because I had a PS2 and an Xbox. But I didn't have a problem moving to the 360. Um, one of the things that also put me up about the PS3 at the time was by, the, by eventually when it was released in 2006, a year after the 360, it was just too expensive. Now, yes, I know that, you know, you've got to buy a hard drive for, like, the 360 if you want to save games and all that kind of stuff. The PS3 comes with one. Yes, there's the argument, which I may touch upon if I remember, um, about the, you know, the, the Xbox Live, which costs money, you know, for a subscription. The PlayStation is three. Uh, is, is three. Brilliant. The PlayStation is free um, to play online. That's all very well. But... Really, it was just, as a, as a package, you know, I think consumers look at the price straight away. And the Xbox 360, even though you had to buy additional software or hardware, it was cheaper. And people are going to 
notice that. No matter how much you dress it up or don't dress it up, it, it just sticks out the price like a sore thumb. So Xbox straight away with the 360 got off to a flying start. Not just was it a cheaper price, but it came out a year in advance. So, so Microsoft had a great chance and a great opportunity to, to capitalise on that market. Because I think a lot of PS2 owners, I mean, they faced a bit of a conundrum, really. What do they do? They were loyal to the PS1 and the PS2. Do they wait an entire year by the time the PS3 comes out and then get the PS3? Or do they just think, ah, oh, whatever, let's just get a 360? And I think a lot of them did get a 360. And I think Sony made a mistake there in, you know, that year-long wait. But um, ultimately, it didn't really bother me, I've got to be honest, because I ended up getting a PS3 as well. And I got my PS3 around about two, two and a half years ago. And it's an amazing bit of kit. You know, I use it now more than the 360. Um, but I, I go through these kind of changes. You know, one minute I'll be using the 360 a lot, and then it'll be the PS3. Now, the Blu-ray, I'm not really bothered about Blu-ray. I do like movies like anyone else, but I'm not a collector of DVDs or Blu-rays. The Blu-ray doesn't really bother me, and it was never a selling point. Never a selling point. I know for some it might have been, uh, you know, but for me, I, it, it didn't matter. It was completely irrelevant. But um, I absolutely love the console. Now, a couple of things I'd like to touch upon is the box design. Now, I know it might sound a little bit silly, but I absolutely absolutely love the new uh, PlayStation 3 design for the covers or for the boxes in general. First of all I love the transparency there. I just think it, it looks absolutely amazing with the clear white plastic. You're probably thinking well you know all it is is plastic does it really matter? To me I think yeah I think it looks polished, very kind of feng shui, very futuristic, just it looks tidy, it looks neat, it looks professional. Um, kind of for me anyway in stark contrast to the Xbox 360 which just looks a little bit tiresome and a little bit out of date now with the green boxes. Um, I just think they need to do something with that. It looks a little bit silly. But these I absolutely love. And I love the new logo as well at the top and obviously at the side. Now, I've got to be honest, it did take... Can you even see that because of the light? I'm sure you all know what a PS3 game looks like anyway. But it took me some while to get used to this because if you look at the new one... Let me hide that for a second. And then look at the old one and then look at the side... You can see that red and black logo at the top. Now, I liked that to begin with. I thought it looked really good. And it's just funny, isn't it, what kind of time does and what hindsight does. And I look at it now, uh, maybe, I guess, in comparison to this, when you see them lined up. And this just looks really fresh. It looks really modern, futuristic and great. And this looks terrible, I think. It just looks so, I mean, red and black. It's just not the greatest mix in the world. It just look, it looks old. So even though I was against Sony changing the design at, at the start, because it ruined the uniformity of all my games lined up, um, even though I was against it, I now absolutely love this. This looks amazing, and I'm really pleased they did. So it just goes to show you how you can change your mind. And um, yeah, and I've certainly been won over by this. I think it looks fantastic. The only problem, really, of course, is that when you've got a lot of old games, like I say, it ruins the uniformity particularly if you have, say, Uncharted, and I know this is Little Big Planet, but for Uncharted, the original is the same. It's got the little black and red logo at the top. So Uncharted, next to Uncharted 2, kind of looks a little bit like that, and it just looks terrible. It looks silly. So what I've tended to do is I separate all my games, and I have all the newer ones released all lined up together, and then I have all the older ones lined up together. Um, they're not in alphabetical order, but they will be eventually, because I'm kind of a bit OCD about that. But, um, but I just love the box designs, and I know it sounds weird, but it's a selling factor. It really is for me, even though I've got it now, so it doesn't really matter. But that kind of thing, if I didn't have a 360 or a PS3, I would look at little things like that, and I think, well, I love the look of them boxes, so PS3 wins. So um, that's another thing. Now let's touch upon the controllers. Now, the 360 controller, I have um, a black Xbox Elite. I absolutely love it, by the way. Let me just say that even though I'm playing the, th uh, the PS3 more than I'm playing the 360 at the moment, um, I don't really have a particular favourite. I, I love them both. They're great pieces of kit. Absolutely. The controller, I've said this before, I prefer it. I'm just going to say it and just be honest. I prefer the 360 controller. I put my hands in it. Everything goes into the right place. You know, when you're touching it, it's just an amazing design. The PS3 one, don't get me wrong, it's great. You know, there's a standard one or there's a dual shock one here. Can you hear that? Rattles around. And herein lies one of my problems with the PS3 controller. I personally find they're quite cheap. They feel cheap, you kind of just move it and it kind of... I don't know, it just... It feels as if I can break this. 
it doesn't feel as if I can break this. Not by dropping it. If I was to throw it against the wall right now, which I'm not going to do, that'll make good viewing. Um, <laughs> but um, if I was to do that, it probably, well, it probably would break if I threw it with force. But if I just dropped it now, wouldn't be a problem. If I dropped this, I'd just get the feeling it, it would break. And like I say, with this little rattle, which you probably can't hear, can you? Probably not. But anyway, it just, it just feels cheap. Now, I do like it. It is a great controller, and I have got used to it over time. Essentially, it's just like a PS1 and a PS2 controller, which, of course, I've got vast experience with. And, so, and it's not a rapid departure, like I say, from either one of them. So it, it's familiarity with me. But um, there's just something about it. I, I often find I press, like, even the middle button there, the PlayStation controller, if I'm using the analog stick, I often find I mistakenly press this, and then the bloody menu comes up in the middle of a game or online, and it's just a nuisance. And I don't get that feeling with that, I guess because it's higher up. The, the 360 one, whereas this one's right almost level with your thumb or your finger, whatever. And I just find it a little bit clumsy. Um, also on my ones, I guess this is just wear and tear, and you probably can't work it out. But if I put that PS3 control, you can't work it out at all, actually. But there, the analog stick on the left one, the rubber started to come away. Can you see that? Which is really annoying. Strangely, that's on the Dual Shock one, on my single, um, my non-analog control pad, the exact same has happened. Can you see that again? It started to come off. And I'm just thinking, what the hell is this? Now, I do know that you can go on eBay or Amazon and just get a replacement kind of rubber pad or thumbstick, I guess, and replace it. I imagine you'd have to take screwdrivers to it. Um, but it's just not the point. Why on earth have two of my controllers had the same thing happen to them? Is it something to do with the design? I don't really know. Now, I'm sure it probably happens with the 361 over time as well. Maybe it's just wear and tear. Um, but I don't know. But generally speaking, I absolutely love the 360 controller. Um, it may be as a result, I guess, of having had the 360, you know, three years in advance of having a PS3. Maybe I got used to it. But then again, like I say, I'm possibly contradict myself because I did have a PS1, I did have a PS2, and it's pretty much the same thing. I just think, in all honesty, I prefer the 360 controller. Maybe, maybe you differ, maybe you have a different opinion. I don't know, but it would be... Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to hear what you know what people think. Cup of tea, of course. Now, what else have I written down up there? It doesn't help because I've written everything in like shorthand and like I'm trying to remember it and I'm looking at a word thing. What does that mean? Um, okay, so exclusives, 360 exclusives. The one for me that sticks out like a sore thumb is of course Halo, Halo 3, Halo Reach, uh, ODST. Well, maybe not, but uh, Halo Reach anyway, and Halo 3, fantastic games. And that was one of the reasons why I was proud to have a 360 to begin with because going back from the Xbox generation I was a big Halo fan. Not a huge fan but a big fan. I became a huge fan of it uh, thanks to Halo 3 on the 360. It was quite possibly the first game that I'd ever played uh, online uh, or no let me let me rephrase that it was the first game I think I was ever addicted to online. Um, you know I did have the PlayStation 2 online I took that um, online I took the original Xbox online but the 360 with Halo 3 was when I really started to get into online gaming. And then very quickly after that, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which is obviously a multi-format game, but um, that completely, I spent a long time on that. It's a great, great game. So there are exclusives. You look at the PlayStation 3, you think like Killzone 2 or 3, which has just come out. You look at Uncharted, you look at Little Big Planet, whatever else there may be, you know. Um, like I say, for me, I'm just a gamer. I, I'm not blinded by loyalty when it comes to either one. So it doesn't really bother me. You know, I, I have a 360, I have a PS3, so I can play them all. So like I said, I've touched upon the um, the box art, and that is a big contributing factor to me, as silly as it sounds. I really do prefer the PS3 games, or the boxes. I prefer the 360 controller. Now, one of the things that was, maybe isn't anymore, uh, a selling point, is when it comes to Xbox Live, you have to pay for your subscription. I don't know what it is now. Is it $40? Is it 30 quid? I don't know what it is. I mean, I've just been subscribed for about five years and it's like a direct debit that comes out every year. So I don't know if the prices have changed. Now, I do think it's worth it. I've got to be honest. Now, PS3 owners, and like I say, I'm one myself, will turn around and they'll be saying, oh yeah, but you can, you can play for free on the PlayStation Network. That's true. But I also think you get what you pay for. I've got to be honest. And I think the services which are on offer the community which is on offer, the features which are implemented into Xbox Live that the, three, uh, that the PS3 doesn't have, 
I think personally justify a subscription fee. I'm not saying it justifies the current fee, which it is, but I do think it justifies a fee. Um, because you are paying for a slightly better service. One of the things that annoys me, this is kind of tying into what I'm saying, I guess. The other day, well, in fact, yesterday, I was looking through my games behind me, I fancied a quick go on the PlayStation, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to play Gran Turismo 5. I haven't played it for months, or a few weeks at least, and I really want to play it. I really had the urge to play Gran Turismo 5. So I took it off the shelf, went into the living room, put it into the, the, uh, the PS3, and what was I presented with? but a screen saying I needed to update not one, not two, but three patches. And it took me about 45 minutes, and it just, it really annoyed me. Because all I wanted to do was put it on and have a quick, you know, a few races. But I couldn't. I had to bloody have the thing installed, and I had to come back in here, and, um, you know, mess around on the bloody computer for like 40 minutes or whatever it was. And it was just really frustrating. I hate that about the PlayStation 3. I really do dislike that, I've got to be honest. But there's not a lot you can do, that's just the way it is. Um, but I guess that is part of the reason of not paying for your service. Conversely, um, on the 360, let's say I wanted to play Halo Reach, for example, which is a game I've been playing lately. Okay, so I let's say um, a patch needs to be updated. I put the, the disc into the 360, it tells me a patch needs to be updated for the game. How quick is it done in? You're looking around about 60 seconds. And that is the difference. So you kind of get what you pay for. So yes, the PlayStation is free, but then you have to wait sometimes an hour or more, and I've experienced it. I guess it may depend on your connection as well, but you have to wait a substantial time for the bloody things to download. And it can ruin the enjoyment, you know, that anticipation of playing the game. 360, it's done and dusty within 60 seconds, usually, and then you, you're back playing the game, and everyone's happy. So I, I love that, I've got to be honest. Um, also, Microsoft have got a bit of a stranglehold when it comes to DLC and time DLC. We've all seen uh, Call of Duty. Now, whether we're big Call of Duty fans or not, you know, we all know that uh, Microsoft had the deal with um, Activision or Infinity Ward, whoever it was, Treyarch, um, in regards to the Call of Duty games, get the DLC sometimes, what, four, five, six weeks in advance of the PS3 owners. I do think that's a little bit unfair, but money talks in this day and age. You know, we're living in an era where money is just the be-all and end-all, really. So particularly when it comes to an industry like the gaming industry, or Hollywood, the music industry, whatever it is, people are out to make money. And if Microsoft turn around to Treyarch or turn around to anyone and say, well, we'll give you several million, I don't know, dollars if you give it to us as an exclusive for six weeks, or an exclusive altogether as in a game for that console, then game publishers and designers are going to listen. So I do think that's unfair. But again, it's another reason, uh, another string, if you like, to the 360's bow. Another reason to pay for their subscription, for their service, is yes, you've still got to then pay extra for that exclusive, but you're getting it earlier than you would if you were a PS3 owner and not a 360 owner. So it's just little things like that, which um, which I guess all contribute. So I think that, that really ties it up. I mean, I can repeat the same stuff and rehash it all again, but I'm just really interested to, you know, what you think. Um, you know, do you have a PS3? Do you have a 360? Do you have the pair of them? Do you prefer one over the other? Um, was there a time where you just solidly, exclusively paid, played the 360, but now you've kind of been one round and played the PS3? Do you play the PS3 more than the 360? Is it pretty even? What does it depend on? Um, I know the PS3 is kind of prone to glitches and hackers and all that kind of stuff, and I saw that myself. Uh, this was also yesterday. Not content with being annoyed from putting Gran Turismo in and waiting an hour for it to bloody update, I thought I'd have a quick go on, on World at War, on the PlayStation 3, and um, it didn't need a patch actually, funny enough, but the funny thing is, it maybe it bloody does need a patch, because when I went onto the leaderboards, the people like number one, two, three, four, five, all the people at the top of the leaderboard in the world, all had like these weird emblems, like, and bloody minus scores, and it said they'd been online for like, you know, 10 seconds, and all that kind of rubbish, or 10 minutes, and you can't be number one in the world and uh, play for 10 minutes. So all the leaderboards are completely screwed up. So it does make me think as if a lot of game publishers, designers, almost kind of, I mean, yes, they release the games on the PS3, but do they lose a little bit of faith in it? Because they know that games are going to get hacked. And Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 uh, is a prime example of that. You know, we, we've again, we've all seen and, and heard things about how a game has been ruined. Now, weirdly, when I did have Modern Warfare 2 on the PlayStation 3, and I will be getting it again, just for a laugh, bit of nostalgia, 
but when I had it on the PS3, I never really encountered that. But maybe by the time I had it on the uh, stop playing, I should say, on the on the PS3, and then moved on to the 360 version, maybe that's when everyone kind of joins the PS3 kind of hacking brigade. I'm not really sure, but I've not really experienced it to my knowledge. But maybe that's another reason that puts you off the 360, uh, the PS3. I'm constantly getting the bloody confused. Maybe that's another reason that puts you off getting a PS3, is that all the rumours, and true rumours, of people hacking into the system, glitching, cheating, ruining people's experiences. Um, I guess another thing to throw is the community online. Um, you go on a typical 360 game, let's use Call of Duty as an example. You go on Call of Duty and you, um, you play a game, whether you're using a headset or not, you know people are going to be talking. They're going to be talking in the background. And it's, I'd say, let's say there's 20 people in a lobby. Maybe that's too much. Let's say 14. 14 people in a lobby, probably five or six of them will have a headset. Conversely, on the PlayStation 3, I'd say out of 14 people in the lobby, none of them have got a headset because people just do not talk. But a reason behind that, of course, is because the demographic of the user base for the PlayStation 3 is older. So maybe the whole trash talking is less prevalent. Well, not maybe, it definitely is less prevalent on a PlayStation 3 which I really admire. You know, there's nothing worse than having a quick game and all you can hear is these whiny kids swearing away and insulting people. And it really puts you off, you know. It, it does for me anyway. I don't know about you. It's just really boring kind of listening to it. The PlayStation 3, hardly anybody talks, but that's a good thing because you can just get on with the game. And, it, and it's great. In terms of party chat and talking on the PlayStation 3, I don't think you can do it, can you? I'm not really, I'm not really certain on that. I do have a Bluetooth headset, but I've never used it on the PlayStation 3. I've never had a reason to use it. I do have friends who have a PlayStation 3, but every time we have a play, uh, it's kind of in silence. It's as if we're mute, or we just, uh, I don't know, we just can't bother to talk. But we, we will do eventually. But that's another thing I like about the, the 360. Um, oh, sorry, about the PS3. I've done it again, I've confused the two. I love the, the PS3 in regards to the fact that the demographic is older and it's more mature. So that's that. Like I say, I, I said I was going to stop talking about it, and then I carried on. So I'm genuinely interested to what you guys think. So if you want to post your comments below, if you want to maybe send me an email or a PM, I should say, or maybe you want to do a video response. Now, I know last week when I did my DLC and the future of gaming kind of tag, I know a guy called, I think it's, is it Ease Light or Easy Light? Um, he did a video response to it, but it didn't show up on my video. So no one saw it unless you're subscribed to him or found it by chance. And that was really unfortunate, and I don't know why that happened. And he sent me a message, and he's like, I don't know why it's not showing up. And I don't know why it's not showing up either. I didn't get any, like, email notification or anything. So uh, that was weird. Um, maybe I'm meant to change something in my preferences. If you know why it didn't show up, please let me know. But anyway, so that's that. What I'll do, actually, I've got a shout-out coming up, but what I'll also do is I'll put a link to Easy Lights or Easy Lights channel below, and you can check out his video. No, I'll put a link to the video, so you can watch the video, see what he said. And obviously, if you like what you see, subscribe to me. He's a nice guy. So um, I'm sure you'll like that. Anyway, so before I come to my shout-out, I've got a couple of um, couple of pickups to show you. There's only two, and there's absolutely nothing to get excited about. Um, despite being a 360 and a PS3 fan, these are both for the PS3. Um, the first one I'm not going to talk about at all, really. It's not a game I particularly love. It's SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. I'm not a wrestling fan. Uh, I was briefly a wrestling fan in around about 1991 or 92, um, but that was that was back in the day. But I got this because it was three dollars, and I thought I couldn't pass it off three dollars. And the next one I got was seven dollars, and it's Color Juarez Bound in Blood. I did have this on the 360, um, but I've sold it a long time ago because I wasn't really playing it. Uh, obviously, got it again now on the uh, PS3. Haven't played it. It's probably awful. Um, in fact, I know from experience, it wasn't as good as the original. I love the original Call of Juarez, so when this came out, I was really excited. And I came mightily close to buying this on release day for like kind of $40, $50. But obviously, in the end, I, I didn't, and I'm mightily relieved that I, that I didn't as well. So $7, you can't go wrong. Box and complete, as they all are, and um, in good condition, and I'm really pleased with it. So um, that about sums it up, I think, really. There's then two games. I've got a few games arriving next week. Um, Crisis 2 I haven't yet bought, but I will get it. I've just really got to decide, do I want to get it on the 360? Do I want to get it on the PS3? I'm not really sure what I want to do. Um, I love the cases, the design, like I say, of the PS3 games. So I love the idea of adding another game to my collection and um, having that, you know, expand. But 
then again, if it comes to a multiplayer online experience, do I want to get Crisis 2 for the 360? Because online, it's you know, people are more communicative. But then the flip side to that, as I touched upon, is you encounter idiots like swearing and ranting and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure I want to do that. So um, once again, the bloody music's run out. You know, I deliberately choose around, around about six or seven songs because I think there's no way I'll talk and the songs are finished, but they have. So I'm just going to pick something completely, completely random. Uh, oh, here we go. How about this? Phil Collins. Two hearts. Have a listen to this. Sorry. <laughs> Let's turn that down. It's a great song. Come on. If you like your cheesy 80s pop, you do like that. Apologies if that's still really loud in the background, but it doesn't seem really loud. Um, as far as I can hear it. But anyway, so that's that. I've done my little rant. Um, again, I always say rant. I don't think it is a rant. It's just like a topic, a debate. So I've done that. I've um, shown my pickups. There's only two. Have a few more arriving next week. Like I said, not sure what to do on Crisis 2. I don't know whether to get it for the 360 or the PS3. Um, they kind of look the same, so I don't know. Do you have it on the PS3? Do you have it on the 360 as well, maybe? Um, is it better on one or the other? Can, let me know if you... Ah, uh, stick my teeth in. Let me know what you think on that. Uh, yeah, so shout out. What I'm going to do for a shout out, I think I mentioned this guy um, going back months and months and months. And, um, excuse me, he's, um, he's a great guy. He's called DanW547. He's named funnily enough, he's Dan. And um, he's got a great channel and I really enjoy watching his stuff. And I have done for the best part of maybe a year, maybe more. I, I'm not really sure when, whenever I subscribe to him. And, you know, he does his usual stuff, he does his pickups, he does gameplay videos, he does reviews, he does kind of like a bit of a glossing over of, um, what did he do quite recently? Uh, like an overview of the PlayStation Plus, which is what I didn't gloss upon uh, here, which is like a, a subscription for the PlayStation 3, which gives you extra features, such as, uh, I guess, maybe timed, exclusive demos, and um, cheaper, sometimes free games. But I think there's a bit of a catch with the free games. I think they're free until you close your account, so they're not really free. Um, but again, that's another thing to bear in mind when you're choosing a, three, a 360 or a PS3. So there's all these services, what do you want? What caters for your needs? But anyway, check him out. I think, um, let me just have a look. He's just got over 320 subs. And I think he deserves a lot more because he's got a lot of videos up. I can't quite see how many videos he does. It doesn't tell me. Um, maybe he's got 100 videos, maybe 200. I don't know, it might be 300 for that matter. All I know is I've, I've been subscribed to him for a while. He does regular videos. I always watch them. I always enjoy them. Um, he's a good guy. Um, yeah, check him out. If you're not aware of him, just please check him out. And if only one person watching this subs to him, then I've done my job. But uh, as ever, you know, I always feel a little bit embarrassed doing shout-outs because I've only got like 450 subs myself. So the chances are, if you're sub to me, you're probably sub to Dan anyway. Or sub to anyone else that I mentioned for that matter. But if you're not, please check him out. I'm sure you'll really like what you see. And if you do videos yourself, and if you do videos that he likes, who knows, he might even sub you back. So um, that's about all, guys. I've ranted like uh, a madman, but it's another video out of the way. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Leave your comments. If you want to do a video response, um, please feel free to do that. I don't know whether it'll automatically add it or whether I've got it. I don't know what happens with that um, video response after the last episode with Easy Light. Like I said, check his channel out as well below. Um, but yeah, feel free to do a video response. I'd love to see what you think about it. Or if you don't want to do that, just leave your comments. So thanks for watching. See you later.